When this bear market ends, are you going to be ready? A lot of people are complaining about the price action right now. The bear market's too long. I keep seeing positive news, no positive price action. What are we supposed to do? You gotta wait. Because these four charts are showing that crypto adoption is still surging. I can't wait to show these to you guys. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Wade. You're watching DHN. We're talking crypto in this one. XDC, XRP, as well as a couple altcoins. That's the subject for discussion today. But I want to start with these four charts, guys, because after looking at them, yeah, definitely feel a lot more optimistic about the space. Ethereum surpassing 10 billion in revenue in seven years, outpacing some of the most prominent software companies we've seen over the last 20 years. Now, this is a testament to the performance of the industry and the growth of Ethereum, despite all of the issues with the gas fees and the ETH gate and whatever Vitalik decides to sell this month. Even through all of that, Ethereum surpasses 10 billion in revenue in seven years. The only other two companies to pull this off, Google and Facebook, now known as, you know, Alphabet and Meta, but we know them as Google and Facebook, part of the fang. So, if that is a proxy to represent the entire industry, hmm, well, again, it should just make you more hopeful. All right. Second chart here. I also like this one. Ethereum daily active users and active users across other platforms. Arbitrum, Optimism, Polygon, Base, which is getting a lot of activity for it to be so new. But with its connection to Coinbase, I'm not surprised. You see here, though, all of this activity above me, right over here ish. After January 1st, we've started to increase. Massive incline. Yesterday, I made a point about December. This is one of the examples right here. You can see 2020, 2021, 2022, pretty much did. But in December of 2022, look at that. You, you can see the even spike right there. You got to think about what happens in December. It's the holiday season. People are thinking about buying stuff. <laughs> so they're thinking about their money. At the same time, the fiscal year, the financial calendar, that's Q1 for them, right? I've observed over the last couple of years that the big financial players, they tend to make their moves right around Christmas, all right, there's an there's a meeting that goes on. I can't really recall it right now in the moment. Somebody watching knows what I'm talking about. But there's a meeting that happens end of November. And then we get the results from that meeting in December. And after that, there is always some activity and it usually starts after December 15th. I'm going to just put it that way. As we get closer to that time, of course, you know, I'm going to point out what I'm talking about. But let's look at these other two charts here. Stablecoin market cap. This one I really like. You can see, yeah, it's been a rocky, rocky 2023 for stable coins. However, you can see over the last, what's that, since August 10th, over the last month or so, we've started to settle down a bit. Usually when that happens, I remember this occurring Prior to the 2021 run up, stable coins, when they increase in activity, the market follows. And that makes a lot of sense when you think about how people are entering the space. On top of that, we have this global stable coin regulation going on right now, which I think contributed to this uh, descending angle here, right? It, it, it really contributed because the regulation, the laws that are being put in place around stable coins, it makes the typical investor, you know, a bit more apprehensive to invest in a stablecoin product or, you know, a company or to even hold them, especially with the talk of DPEGs and, you know, it actually happened not too long ago. I can understand that. However, a lot of these stablecoin bills, they're getting ready to turn over, right? And when we take a look at this chart here, Liquid staking, top 15 projects in liquid staking based on daily assets staked since launch. Again, starting in December, increased amount of staking activity. And this is during the time 
when staking was removed from the United States. Okay, and you can see this liquid staking is a form of staking where your assets are not locked in. So this is a more flexible version of staking. Lido Finance is the token that you want to look at. That's there who is leading this whole liquid staking movement. But what I'm seeing is people when people stake, it shows that they have trust in the asset. So if we have a lot of staking activity returning back to the space, then there's trust coming from somewhere, okay? Now, this is just one indicator, of course, but I love how they put this because, yes, you can find more information like this. Sources like DeFi, Llama, Masari, uh, CoinMarketCap has been getting a lot better with their data aggregation recently, so you may be able to see it there. But what's the most telling to me is this is the is the daily activity and then the staking all right because it shows people coming into the space and this shows people staying in the space and that's good to see especially with bills like this being passed yes it's time to talk about hdc it's time to talk about this electronic trade documents bill because the rest of the world is ready they are getting prepared you got to keep in mind when the uk sets a law like this the rest of the world follows they were the first ones 200 years ago to set the laws on international trade now they're doing it to digitize it i have so much more respect for uk after this year i'm gonna tell you that but love this story we're gonna break it down it's gonna teach us a lot about electronic trade documents and how the industry around it is beginning to form now it's really starting to accelerate and we need to know this because xdc is right in the middle and what we're seeing now are the companies that are building out the market the landscape that xdc is going to dominate best believe now why the electronic trade documents act is the most important law you've never heard of you mean you're right about that and this is coming from chris holmes the uh, peer in the house of lords this is a high-ranking member very important man Forbes wrote a corresponding article to this one that backed up everything he's saying. We don't have to read that one. Chris does a wonderful job for us right here. So first thing you need to know, September 20th, the Electronic Trade Documents Act came into force. That means it became law. Not only will this bill make trade faster, cheaper and greener, it is an English law model of how to legislate for technology through specific criteria a blockchain bill that will stimulate blockchain development and adoption without ever mentioning blockchain mm. that's the most powerful part of this whole situation because like i have been telling you the projects who have the ability to present crypto to someone who has no idea what it is and still win are the ones that are gonna win okay so we're talking about I'm going to use Solana as an example because that Saga mobile phone, despite what happened before and their previous connections, that mobile phone, if it works, Solana is going to be unstoppable. And I am preparing the Elite 8 for 2024. Oh boy, that one's going to be different. But let's finish this off here. The bill is now an act September 20th. This important new law came into force. On the same day, I missed this one. Lloyd's Banking Group and Matalan completed the first digital trade transaction under the new law using Nijio's Trace Original System. Now, we're going to pause right here because I want you to know this piece of information. And Nijio welcomes new ITFA DNI initiative members. This goes all the way back to 2021. And as you can see, who's involved? the x right there and then we also have a couple other companies that are going to be of interest cargo x and lloyd's bank you can see the relationship right here guys so what i've learned is that anigio and the other company because we're going to finish this out here lloyd's have invested three million to help anigio develop this blockchain solution for trade finance documentation and take advantage of the opportunity presented by the electronic trade documents act one percent of the four billion trade documents in transit daily are digital just one percent 
But <laughs> this three million to help Inigio, this comes, this actually happened this week. Cargo X and Inigio partnered to create blockchain interoperability with Lloyds Bank and ICC CFDTI for electronic trade documentation. So Cargo X and Inigio, both independent electronic trade document providers, have collaboratively developed a functional and functionally proven the capability to switch electronic trade document originals. The document was transferred across the two and was a FIATA electronic bill of laden, which is standardized by the International Federation of Freight Forwarders Associations. Now, all that simply means, guys, because, yeah, to read through this would bog you down. Inigio and Cargo X, because Cargo X, for one, they utilize blockchain, but they're using Ethereum. All right. However, we all know xdc is compatible with ethereum so there's no worry there anigio is the other company right anigio has their own blockchain system as well so what i'm seeing is that anigio and cargo x what they do is allow traditional companies to digitize where xdc comes in is the storage of the files right so what's being created are platforms that will address the individual services of digital trade finance. And when I talk about the individual services, we're referring to, because he breaks it down to the individual processes. The bill of laden has a different process. Your regular uh, trade uh, coming from the warehouse, that package packaging slip, that has a different process to it. So... Inigio and Cargo X, they're developing the first layer to what's going on. So that way, once the documents have been digitized, they can be stored on the XDC network. XDC launched the XDC trade network. We talked about that a few weeks ago. What that does is essentially both actions. It allows you to digitize and it allows you to store. That's going to be the difference. And this is supported right here. I'm glad I was able to find that. Although the law itself is technology neutral, no particular technology is mentioned in the act. It sets out the criteria that it must be met by a reliable system to qualify as an electronic trade document. These criteria are set out in clause two and specify that an electronic trade document must be identifiable so that it can be distinguishable from any copies, retain its integrity and be subject to exclusive control. These are requirements that can be met by several technologies and obvious one being distributed ledger systems. That just says it right there, right? That's the, the, the proof is in the pudding as they say. When it comes to a reliable system that allows a document or a file, in this case, to retain its integrity, that's an immutable ledger right there. And that's, of course, what XDC focuses on. Now, here's something, too. The government estimates that the new law could generate a net benefit of 1.1 billion euros for the British economy over the next decade for UK businesses trading around the world. 1.14 billion. All right. There's no need to do a conversion on that. That's the market that XDC is aiming for. That's why I'm rocking with XDC. Now, another very important detail. And I think I mentioned this a few minutes ago, but UK, they lead the discussion. They lead the industry in this type of thing. The UK is at the forefront of these developments and it's the first G7 nation to pass legislation that is compatible with the United Nations Model Law on Electronic Transferable Records, also known as MLETR. You can watch this video up here to learn everything you want to know about that. English law. <clears throat> Has a considerable impact on global trade, 80% of bills of laden, 60% of global trade finance operate on English law. So with the digitization of trade, a new industry is being created. And so far, there are only a handful of players here. There are only a handful of players. So I appreciate the fact that the XDC network saw this coming 
years ago. All right, saw it coming years ago and they picked the perfect time to drop this down. So now with this bill in force as of September 20th, what we have to do now is just wait for the applications to begin to unfold. You can tell by the on-chain activity, the price activity of XDC, it's still very stable from that run-up that it had initially with the announcement of the bill that was going to be go into effect. When the announcement came out that the decision was finalized, that we would get a law by September, we had that pump that was followed by, I believe, being listed or listing US treasuries on the platform. All of that activity, XDC has sustained that price. All right, we may have dipped a little bit down to the four cent range, but remember, we were at two, we were at three all this year. Okay, that's an example of adoption right there for you. Oh, let's talk XRP though, because there's some stuff and some things going on in the space that if you're watching my channel and you're holding xrp i want you to know about all right i want you to know about the truth now there's been a lot of discussion about xrp buyback and i much like you had no idea what the heck people were talking about there was never anything substantiated about it everybody was just like they're gonna take all our xrp and everyone was freaking out well this expert has shed light on the xrp ledger clawback amendment proper term debunks claims of secret amendments now this is coming from uh raf of con man and if you hold xrp you want to follow this man all right he's one of the only few legit sources that you know gives xrp related information especially on twitter and in a recent tweet raf of con man a prominent figure in a community dispels claims about the presence of a secret amendment in the xrp ledger ecosystem if someone tells you there are secret xrp ledger amendments they are lying to you thanks walk so <laughs> what he goes in to explain is that the amendment process is public so nothing is hidden the xls 39d clawback proposal is specifically focused at institutional customers so if you're buying xrp off retail off the exchange this is not going to affect you in any shape or form unless you have a company and you're buying a hundred thousand two hundred thousand xrp at a time and then something goes wrong that is what this is for the whole argument stemmed about and we're going to touch on this because this is something that happens in crypto far too often. And if you're new, I want you to be aware of the BS. Notably, the argument about the supposed secrecy in the ledger revision stemmed from the development community's XLS 39D claw back amendment. In a recent tweet, prominent pro XRP influencer Mr. Jackson tweeted, there is Mr. Lewis Jackson, sorry, tweeted, there's a secret XRP ledger amendment that makes the buyback possible man it was so many of those videos were popping out this summer earlier actually before the sec uh miss torres excuse me made it clear that retail sales of xrp were not formed of security this was the narrative all right earlier in the year in the tweet jackson provided no detailed explanation of his claim instead he claimed he would discuss them in an upcoming video i never watched the video but some XRP community members already began to challenge him. They argued Jackson had no clue what he was talking about. Now, <laughs> I, like I said, I didn't watch the video because I didn't fall for it in the beginning. But Mr. Khan, Rafa Khan, clarified that the disputed XLS 39 clawback amendment only concerns issued tokens, specifically trust line assets. He added that it has no impact on the xrp token itself this is a product feature this is an added product feature that is going to be necessary for the development of the ledger as a commercial facing product that's not what people are paying attention to right now though so i i don't get it besides the xrp ledger documentation provides proper context to the issue it stated that in light of regulatory consideration, certain token issuers need the capability to retrieve tokens that have been disseminated to various accounts. The docs highlighted that the mechanism serves as a safeguard in scenarios where tokens are inadvertently sent to accounts involved in illegal activities, permitting issuers to recover these funds. I believe it was this year, Ethereum, Coinbase, 
uh, Binance, Kraken, and Crypto.com. They were all coming together to figure out a way to create features that would allow people to get their money back in the event they sent it to the wrong address, they got hacked or scammed, right? You ever get one of those emails that tells you, send me this amount, I'll send you this amount back? Yeah, yeah, it's all BS. This feature is going to be, we're gonna start seeing this feature in a lot more places because it's a safety risk, right? It addresses a safety issue. And if we're gonna go mainstream, we need to make this feel as safe as possible. We're not going to, this market is not gonna flip until we get past the crypto is a scam sentiment. And it's products like that that are actually going to help us, okay? So no, there is no XRP buyback at all. It's not happening. This update to the ledger from a retail side, from a commercial side, is a very good thing. Now, let's talk about something else, man. The XRP space, I kind of feel, oh man, I think we're talking about XRP. What is with these ads? Oh my God. Oh, my, okay. Um, <laughs> One second, please. What, what the? Y'all use Timu? I, I don't trust it. It reminds me of Wish. We just gonna have to rock out with the uh, AI generated ladies over here. So, Will the U.S. Fed now use XRP? Mr. Albert Brown is presenting the facts, as they say. You know, let's let's dive into this because, again, Mr. Rafa Khan breaking it down. I'm trying to tell you, you need to follow Rafa Khan when you when you're looking into XRP. So here's the discussion. Fed is not about to use XRP. That Google blurb cites the clickbaitiest non-sourced article from the Cryptonomist. Just because it's on the internet doesn't mean it's true. Sources matter. You're right, Khan. You are absolutely right. So the crux of this is something that we've talked about on the channel recently. Fed now, instant payment system and its relationship to blockchain. I will tell you this. I spent three weeks, a full three weeks weeks making those connections for Hedera Hashgraph, for Ripple, and Stellar Lumens. And I find it hilarious that none of that information has made it to these news sites. But this has, <laughs> right? This crap article about XRP being the settlement token for the FedNow system made it around. I'm not gonna, but Rafa Khan recognized this, stating that he wasn't sure about the extent of the Federal Reserve's exploration of crypto in the U.S. He acknowledged that Ripple's participation in the Faster Payments Task Force was a significant association, but clarified that it didn't imply that they would become the new infrastructure. That's the key word. The Fed is not going to use a completely foreign blockchain to run their domestic infrastructure. Of course they're not. However, what people are overlooking, and if you're new to this situation, I want you to understand this, Ripple, when they were a part of that Faster Payments Task Force, was working with a company at the time called Timonos. Timonos is listed as a FedNow service provider today. It was one of the first ones, and Ripple's work with Timonos was on a cloud banking platform called T24, which is now called the Timonos Cloud. And you want to know what the Timonos Cloud allows you to do? Plug and play blockchain networks, not just XRP, Stellar Lumens. OK, and that also implies other payment coins with the same capabilities. Mm, mm, mm. The initial community figure said no. He elaborated that Fed now doesn't use XRP in its infrastructure, emphasizing that any connection between Ripple's ODL partners and Fed now is distinct from Fed now running on XRP. Exactly. Fed now uses it's not a blockchain, but it is a form of DLT because of the functions that are involved. The Fed now uses three different systems. You have an unlimited liquidity portion you have the sending and you have the receiving the sending and receiving have two different criterias and in order for you to access part three which is the master liquidity you have to be on a certain tier as well what the fed now is doing is making these three services interoperable with other financial institutions here in the united states the key term is interoperable 
So, it may not explicitly state it right now, but I'm willing to bet any amount of money that in the next five years, it's going to happen. And <clears throat> last time I said that, let's just go and scroll down here and see if it's still highlighted. No, my highlighter thing was a uh, plug in. It was freaking out this morning. I don't know what's going on. But additionally, a crucial point of reference is the absence of any mention of XRP or Ripple on the FedNow website. However, it is important to note that the Federal Reserve chose Hedera's blockchain payments platform, Drop, as a service provider for the FedNow system. Okay. What's her name? Christine Gillingrad, former Fed chairman. She said, <laughs> and I quote, we have the ability to work with non-banks. They call it the non-bank rule. Certified service providers and members of FedNow can contract non-bank service providers. That's why all throughout 2021, I was telling you guys, virtual asset service providers, digital asset service providers, all of those service providers are going to be very crucial. Fast forward to 2023. No, it was 2022. Fast forward 2023. And what are we seeing unfold? My point exactly. This stuff is not complex. <laughs> it is really not. It is really not complex. I understand it. I don't know. That's probably why I sit here every day and uh, tell you guys about it. But the only connection, and we're closing out on this, between Ripple and Fed now surfaced in February when the Federal Reserve included Vellante Technology, a Ripple partner, in the pilot program of the system. Let me add to that. <clears throat> Volante Technologies was spotted by the Fed going all the way back to 2016. In 2016, guess who Volante was working with? Ripple. And in 2016, they were working on a platform that allowed you to convert, fi convert fiat into digital dollars using the XRP ledger. This was 2016. Now, again, the whole point, what I'm trying to get at here is when it comes to the information you come across, even on YouTube and on Twitter, all right, you just got to be careful. And I'll be the first to tell you, if you don't believe anything I say, double check it. Go ahead. I've spent enough hours in a day to know that what I'm reading is what I'm reading. And now, now I ain't crazy. I ain't a uh, uh, Ivy League student, but I ain't stupid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to get, I ain't going to get started, but that's all I got for this one, y'all. I'm going to let y'all get to y'all day. As always, if you found value in the content, you know what I need you to do. Like, sub, ring the notification bell so that way you don't miss the next one. And as always, if that money is digital, so is the hustle. Have a great day. Have a prosperous day. And I'll see y'all in the next one.